will demonstrate a microdermabrasion with a facial. It will take approximately one hour, real life um, demo. And the first step is to drape the model. We'll try to secure the hair in place. The drape has to be comfortable over the ears, not too tight. It's very important to not catch hair. And just be sure you didn't catch hair when you put the pin. There are different methods of draping. You can choose which one makes you more comfortable. It's important to cover the chest. If the client has um, uh, a curve in the neck, it's important to support the neck too. So it's okay? Yes. Okay, and first step is skin analysis. It's important to have good eyes or wear glasses. And then also we uh, cover the eyes. If you have running water, it's good. If you don't have running water, you need bowls of water uh, from the four by four square of cotton. After I elongate it, I make a butterfly. And after we cover the eyes, we can bring more light. If it's okay for you, or I can do it without the light. Yes. And um, there are four things we can look. We can look for pigmentation. I see pigmentation, the first one, that the first thing that I see here, very light pigmentation. That, um, around the cheeks, very good elasticity, young skin, so very um, slight pigmentation and then congestion around the nose, congestion um, even if they have a little more breaking out around the chin you don't say uh, acne, it's, you call it congestion, it's just nicer and um, let me see around the eye area 99% of people over, over 25, they're dehydrated around the eye area, so I'll say dehydration. Basically, it's a typical uh, combination skin, a little bit oily in the middle, a little bit dry on the side and dehydrated. Uh, but if you don't want to take a guess, it's important to ask the client if they have any uh, concerns about their skin. And if they tell you I'm too dry or I'm too oily, you have a good start to uh, develop the skin analysis from there. So. Uh, do you have any concerns about your skin? Um, it's just, it's dry. Okay. But you really feel like dry. your forehead gets a little bit oily in the nose? Yes, or? yes, okay. yes. So m her, her concern, obviously, dryness, and we'll do a, a, a maintenance facial. She doesn't have any major problem, just uh, to maintain her beautiful skin. So to review, a little bit of pigmentation, a little bit of congestion, a little bit of dehydration and dryness on the side and very slightly oily forehead and nose. And maybe on the chin we have very light pigmentation. Okay, so now we're starting our cleanser. If she will have makeup, I can do a slight, uh, a sh a short analysis before and after removal of the makeup, I will do I'll continue with the analysis. Here I can see a white head, a milia, and I'll demo an extraction on this tweet. The client agrees with me for the states that uh, allowed lancets. Um, okay, so let's start with the cleansing. Before microdermabrasion, it's important to use a drying cleanser. It's important to start with the skin dry. Uh, the client has to fill a profile chart and uh, she doesn't have any um, allergies so I can use any products I have in the Dr. Uh, Dr. Schwab, Ambrosia and C Enzyme, it's C Botana collection. So I start with the drying, it's not drying, it's a soft foam cleanse, deep cleanse. I'll apply it again. So you see, you can put the foam on the skin and you can give it one minute to work. It 
will actually feel, feel really nice when the bubbles, they break. It's a nice sensation. And I can explain the client it's a deep pill, so we, have, we can wait one second for the bubbles to start to break, and then we can do manipulation, friction movements to clean, to clean the skin. If she will have eye makeup remover and lip makeup remover, we'll start with the lips and the eyes. And uh, we have deeper cleanser. We can do a milky cleanser. We can even use hydrophilic oil, which means water-loving oil. But fortunately, my client didn't have any makeup, so we're not losing the time removing makeup. I'll rather do nicer movements. They feel better. Okay. I can see a little blush, so her skin reacted a little bit. The skin likes massage, usually. Uh, just so the water doesn't make a lot of noise, I will, uh, I'll make a, I'll get a bowl of water, obviously warm water, for the first part of the facial. And I like to use 4x4 cotton or 4x4 pads. I don't use too many sponges. The cleansing has to be thorough. You cannot leave the, st the skin on, a, on an alkaline state. Foamy cleansers, they are usually more alkaline than milky cleansers. And uh, the natural skin pH is acidic you don't want to you want to bring it back to the acidic state you don't want to take it too much on the alkaline side because uh, acid mental is the first line of defense okay i'll rinse the cotton and i'll do a second cleansing a uh, second rinsing and then we finish with the we complete the cleansing process with a uh, toner Microdermabrasion is a device that uses a vacuum and either grains of aluminum or um, sometimes baking soda or diamonds, diamond tips. They mechanically exfoliate the skin and they only target the stratum corneum. They don't uh, go deep into the dermis. It's a no downtime exfoliation. It's really pleasant these days because the built-in diamonds in the tip, they, uh, they are really pleasant. They don't end up in the ears and eyes and nose, especially for the beginners. Okay, the toner, you can spray it in a rainbow. You don't spray straight to her face, you spray on the side in the rainbow, like a rainbow movement. You can protect the nose if you can. I didn't because I like to. I like to inhale it too. <laughs> okay, um, the skin looks ready. Except we need to dry it, and for extra dryness, I like to use a tea tree prep. Tea tree prep lotion is an alcohol-free astringent. We use it after extraction. We use it after waxing and it's very good for uh, prepping the skin before peels or microdermabrasion. It has a lot of tea tree, so it smells tea tree. A contraindication for the microdermabrasion will be any opening in the skin, so anybody with severe acne or rosacea, extreme rosacea, great. Three and four will not be a good uh, a good candidate for microdermabrasion. Okay, the skin it's dry. To be sure it's dry, I can dry it with cotton pads. The diamond tips they run from 100 to 200. I choose a 200 one because it's her first microdermabrasion with this machine this year with me. I want to uh, try 
try her skin, test her skin, and I plan to do other exfoliators after. So this is the finest grid. I'll start the machine, and now I'll try to speak over the machine. I probably need to test the suction before I even put the grid, and it's safe to start with a 10 or under 10 if you keep it covered. It's just perfect, 10. And then I put the tip. And I start on the side of the face. You have to be really, really organized between these two bones, the maxi maxilla and zygomatic bone. Can you see? So, very organized, inch by inch. How is the pressure? Yeah. It's good. So you see already erythema, redness here. It's important not to do randomly, not to be all over the place, to overlap. And then at the end, you lift it from the skin. The skin is taut. And my first pass, it's up. And you see the redness right here. Then I do the other side. Okay. The other side, very close. I don't think you can see the other side too much, but I'll... Okay, I move it out of the skin. Okay, you spit it at the end and lift it. Perfect. And now the forehead, so one, two, you already see the dead cells flaking off a little bit. The forehead I like for a, for a large forehead up and down or uh, oblique. Oblique is nice. You have to put it one second on the skin because it's more bony. You can lose the vacuum easily. Okay. You can see the blood flow. Ablic, doing oblique allows you to do, and then you can change the direction. You don't have to. You see, if I go too fast, if I don't wait for the vacuum. Okay, perfect. The next area will be the chin area. And you can work the chin up like this. Following the chin like, like this. When you put the wand on the skin, you don't wait. I'll just show you something here. If you wait and you speak, you'll get a red dot. So you have to move in a steady pace. Okay, the upper lip, you, you don't do it from the inner to outer. She can tuck her lip. If you're afraid, you'll get her lip. And you can do it from here after you keep the skin really tight. You can relax your lip just to show them. If you skin the skin really tight and you stay on the, you watch the vermilion of the lip. You don't go, you don't watch the upper part, then nothing can happen. You just... Maybe you can give them a fat lip if they pay extra. <laughs> okay, so now the neck. You can do the neck from down. It's very hard to keep the skin tight from here. So I like sometimes to hold it here at the bone and do long strips. The neck is sensitive. You have to do it faster. If you do it faster, it's less suction and more exfoliation. And if you do it slower, I'll show you slow. So it's more suction, so you see more red there. The other side, probably the, the neck is as sensitive as the eye area. So just do it faster. If you do it fast, it's less suction. Okay, so the first pass was up. I'm done with the first pass except the nose 